Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Arnaldo, and uh, together with Chiri, Chiri, uh, and we will do it with Joe Mario that uh, unfortunately could, couldn't come the, 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 this time. But he provided material for the DB optimization using Perf that will be presented at the end. Uh, at the beginning, I'll be uh, comparing uh, Perf with other tools, like uh, it's, it's complementary. Uh, uh, Perf allows you to do some stuff, uh, uh, lots of things that you can do with it, with hardware facilities like the CPU counters or PMU uh, for uh, power measurement or for the GPU or for uh, NIC drivers. And our, there is a multitude of things, of counters that are available today and different ones for different architectures. Uh, it's uh, well, thousands of them that, that you can have. And uh, we hope that you uh, get an idea of things that are possible to do with Perf uh, after you see this presentation. Uh, so Perf is just one more thing in your tool, tool chest. Uh, it, 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 it does things, some things more uh, efficiently. It can, it, 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 for instance, it, it will not be, be polling slash proc for getting information about processes or uh, uh, MMAP settings. So it has a lot more flexibility. So uh, I start by comparing a little bit with VMstat. VMstat is a well known uh, tool that people use. It will show several metrics every one second. That's what I asked. So there are several of those things that you can get from Perf as well uh, without reading slash proc and uh, being able to say just for this process or just for this CPU and so on and so forth. So Perf stat uh, is uh, the first thing you use uh, with Perf. It just counts things. Uh, there are lots of things you can count. In this, case, in this specific case, I'm counting contact switches on the whole system. Uh, I haven't specified any workload, then it uh, infers that you want uh, information about the whole system. So uh, there's this interval print, which is the equivalent of the one for VM stat. It will be printing every one second. And then there, there is the count and then the event. You could specify on the context switches together with several other events as well. You could, you could say cache misses or any other things. It would count the number of uh, cache misses or CPU instructions that took place in the last second or in the other interval that we may use. Uh, it runs until you, you press Ctrl C. So there are lots of other events. So perf targets, that's something which is powerful. Uh, all the things you can do with perf, you can do with it for, uh, no, no, there are some things that are constrained by the hardware, but most of the things you can do it system-wide or for a specific CPU or set of CPUs for a C group, or for a PID and its children, or just that, that PID, or for a TID. And, uh, and, and you can even say for this TID <coughs> on that CPU, or the, you can do all sorts of combinations. So this is using perfstat with some threads. So you, I, I'm use, looking at all the bash threads in the system. So uh, when I started this thing, I was just pressing enter uh, in some of the terminals. And so we were seeing the, the number of contact switches in the short form CS. And then at the fifth second, uh, just the system was idle, so there was no contact switches. There was no interactivity with the user. One other thing interesting that you can do uh, that's, uh, is to count uh, the SMIs, the system management interface, just to, show, to showcase one other uh, no usual uh, event that is available in modern machines. So for people that are working with uh, determinism, with real time, they are interested in knowing if uh, there are SMEs taking place in your system. Because it, they, they happen behind the, the, the OS back. The, the OS has no uh, way to prevent those things from happening. You have to, if they are happening and they are getting the way for you to get determinism, the, the, uh, the, without spikes in, let's say, in processing packets, you uh, should try to figure out why is this SME taking place. Sometimes you have to go to the firmware of your machine and disable some, some stuff. 
like uh, thermal throttling or some, some stuff and knowing the, the consequences of doing so. But it's interesting. In the past, we had to do all sorts of things to, to, to try. Uh, you, you, you can try this thing on your, on your machines. And one way to generate an SMI in most systems is to press the mute button. When you press the mute button, the control is outside of the operating system, but it's really quick. And in this case, it's not that much of a problem. It's just a way for you to test uh, the measurement of SMIs. So when I was running this, I pressed the mute button, and at some point there, was, there were some SMIs taking place on my system. Perf the, the way you use perfstat is, is you, 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 either you have a two different machines, or you have two versions of a software, or you have, or you are trying to use some uh, tuning, you, and then you run it first and see the the things that it measures. By default, those are the the <coughs> counters that is measuring, and uh, when it measures, for instance, cycles and instructions. Uh, it provides a, a useful metric, which is instructions per cycle. So it calculates from cycles and instructions. And the same thing for branches and branch misses. It says how many are taking place per second and uh, how many of them are uh, <coughs> being missed from all, the, all of them. So, so this can tell you something about your workload. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, what I was testing was the effect of the, the cache the cache. I just did a, a find on all the, of the files in uh, Checkered uh, uh, kernel tree source repository and just threw, threw it to dev null before I dropped the caches to, 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 to see how, 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 how mu much of those events take place when I do it on a code cache. And then if I do it again, uh, you, you will see that, uh, that 318 milliseconds and it, it went to s down to 68. So that, that's the effect of the cache. But this could be anything else you would like. You could be uh, trying to run your program on just one CPU and s more CPUs and trying to see if this is going to make a difference. So you run it before and after just to get an overall view of the count of things that, uh, that are taking place. Show completion is interesting because there are so many events that uh, if you use this, it will use the other tool, which is perflist, to get all the events that are possible in your machine. And then when you do tab, you are getting this uh, possible events that start with that string. So in this case, it's to demonstrate uh, PMU, some sort of so some, some PMU events, like uh, the, this power energy cores, power energy GPU, that it says how many joules of power are being uh, consumed by the specific parts of your system. So if you try it with this interval mode like dash capital E 1000 milliseconds or every second, then you will see uh, every second how it is. And, and if you start some workload or move your mouse around or whatever, you're going to see what this activity results in terms of power consumption. Uh, this is some, something that is available in recent hardware. The, this notebook I have has this. I think that uh, quite a lot. So that was for perfstat. There are lots of other things that you can do with it, but uh, just uh, to uh, showcase it. You, then you have top, which will poll slash proc and read several files uh, every second or every interval you determine. And we'll show it uh, on the screen. So we have perftop. Perftop uh, does the same, but it, it's not polling slash proc all the time. Uh, the perf infrastructure in the kernel has ways for you to ask when a uh, event like a thread creation or a name map or all those things happens to be notified via the interface, which is the ring buffer. So um, it's the, the effect on the system is uh, 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 diminished. So in this case, there is perf top hierarchy which it will show, it by default uses the cycles, it's a hardware counter, at 4,000 times per second. Uh, the, it samples, the perf stat was about counting, this is about sampling. And uh, that's that PPP, it's like uh, the, the precision level. That, uh, depending on your hardware, uh, you may ask to, be, uh, to use in Intel systems the PEBS uh, component in the CPU. And then uh, some of them allow, uh, uh, to cover for SCID, 
sometimes you are sampling something and uh, without using the PEBS, it may be sampling one instruction later of what really happened. So when you look at the annotation, you have to take this into account. But if you, your machine has this PPP, it, it, it will probe the system to see if, if this is present, then you're gonna have no skid. In this case, a hierarchy chose, uh, uh, I was building the kernel. So the CC1 was the one that was taking most of the sample or where most of the cycles was, were being spent. And then the kernel itself, and then LIPC, and then the overhead for PERF was 2% in this case specific. Uh, probably was at the more or less at the start of the, the, the monitoring, so it was still populating its, its uh, symbol tables. Because if you go to the, if you press enter on LIPC, then you're gonna see uh, inside LIPC, what are the functions that are, where those cycles are being spent. So in, in this case, it was most, of, most of the time was uh, memory allocation. For doing memory allocation, memory allocation cons uh, consolidate, and things like that, that's our SMP. And uh, on the kernel, it was th those, those things. It was clearing pages, getting things from the, from the, from the disk and or from the, uh, the file uh, cache, and uh, all sorts of things. The, the uh, entry syscall, et cetera, uh, because of the uh, um, spectra meltdown, meltdown um, mitigations, it start to appear more uh, lately. So this is another interesting thing with perf. Uh, uh, I don't know if other tools have, but if you do perf top dash age and then a substring, it will show just the options that have that substring. In this case, in this specific case, you can use, for instance, this uh, percent limit to, sh to, to limit the, the things that appear on the screen up to a threshold. So you could say that uh, only entries that have more than 1% or 2% you are interested to, to reduce to make it more compact. Then GDB. GDB, uh, uh, it's a well-known tool and everybody uses, the developers. So it, uh, it has, uh, in general mode, uh, this uh, uh, generically th those kinds of uh, features. It, it has watch point, backtrace, etc. You're going to see that perf has all of this, but uh, without requiring uh, stopping the workload. Um, so the tool in perf that is uh, uh, that gets the functionalities that GDB has and makes them available in different ways, it's perf probe. So you can hook into arbitrary code, be it in the kernel or be it in user space. There are uh, uh, blacklisted uh, code in the kernel that you cannot get because they are part of the infrastructure that I use it, so we would get into a feedback loop, to, so those are, are not there. It uses the, the most uh, uh, performant, the, 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 the mechanism in the kernel that has the best uh, uh, performance, because for instance, if you are putting a, a probe inside a function in some arbitrary place, it's, it's something. If you are putting it at function entry or exit, because of F-trace, the modern kernels have uh, f uh, uh, facilities for you to do this more efficiently than using a, a K-probe, a, a breakpoint. Uh, so, and here we see, uh, we, we combine perf-probe with perf-stat. We are, we are defined, we, we are going to define a probe somewhere. In this case, I'm, I'm putting the probe on the libc uh, DSO, the, the library, the, and the, the function malloc, at the start of the function malloc. So after you do this, uh, as the tool says, you, you're gonna have this new event in the system up to the point where you uh, reboot. Probably see malloc, that's it. So then you do perf start dash e that event, and uh, you, you slip for uh, one second, that's the workload. So the slip program, those 31 mallocs. So you could, you could use this to write other tools like pairing of mallocs with freeze or two different uh, uh, other functions like pthread and pthread unlock so, so, so that you could have a general idea about counting events in some workload. Uh, so it defines a new event, it's, uh, you can use it uh, in, in it's inactive when it's not used. So uh, put it there, and if not, that nobody's using it, it's not activated. When you activate it, that's when it will put in place the K-probe and et cetera. And um, you could do it multiple times in different sessions with other tools, not just perf, but perhaps with S-trace or with other things. 
And where can we put probe? So Path Probe dash capital L ICMP RCV uh, says that uh, it shows the, the source code line for uh, the source code information for I don't specify with that dash X any DSO. So when we when do that, uh, it, it means you are interested in the kernel. So I know that ICMP RCV, even the name of the function is, is clear enough, is where uh, packets, the broadcast packets, ping packets are processed. So I ask for it to be listed, and it finds the matching kernel source, the kernel debug info package, or the kernel source if you build it yourself, and uh, shows the offsets in terms of a number of lines from the start of the function where you can insert breakpoints. You cannot insert breakpoint on lines 53 because it's just a comment. And then I decided to uh, put a breakpoint exactly inside the zip block. Um, so you, you set the source code for, uh, see the source code for a kernel, works for user space as well with you probes, and uh, it shows where probes can be put. Adding the probe, you, you do perf probe ICMP RCV 59, and this uh, it inserted two elements. I don't know exactly why it's, it's doing this this time. I didn't have time to investigate. Last time I did it was not was just one. Sometimes this happens because it's an inline, and it's, it expands in different places. So it puts the probes in different places. But in this case, it doesn't seem to be this. Uh, seems to be some sort of bug. So the same thing we, that we did with malloc for user space. Now for the kernel space, and now not a function start, but at some specific point. And then I can use it together with uh, perftrace. Perftrace dash E, probe ICMP RCV uh, asterisk, a star. Then I, I, it will expand for the, to the two events. And uh, it will trigger every time a, it reaches that point where I put the probe. If I combine this with call graph dwarf, and then I send the ping, then I see the ping all the way from the main loop in the ping binary going down all the way to the to the uh, loopback interface, the code that deals with the loopback interface in the kernel, and then it goes back to that point where it was. So, so you see all the, the network stack. So then we go to S trace. Uh, S trace, it's another thing that has a counterpart in, in Perf, uh, now using the facilities that Perf provides. So uh, this is something that I show in several uh, presentations uh, to show uh, the overhead. So if you do a DD and send 5, 000, uh, 5 million one byte packets from dev zero to dev no, it will be just a lot of syscalls. So we are measuring the impact that the syscall monitoring that's performed by S-trace and performed by, uh, by perf trace has. If you do perf S-trace overhead uh, and run it, uh, and, and then uh, you use this dash E accept. I, I took this from, from a Brandon Gregg presentation because uh, DD doesn't use accept. But even so, the overhead is there because it has to process all the, all the, the things and, and notice that accept uh, didn't get there. You should rather use dash E non. Dash E non. non. Means trace non. Okay, okay. okay but, but it would be equivalent, yeah? Uh, because E accept is not available on all architectures, so it's not a portable. Okay, design. okay. So, uh, so as trace in this case was 25 times is low, which was much better than the f when uh, Brendan Gregg did some example in his blog, which was 44 two times as low at the time. But uh, then he has a, a whole uh, <coughs> a blog about it. So if you go with perf trace instead, uh, it, uh, the overhead is like 1.41 times is lower because it doesn't use the ptrace interface, it doesn't stop the, 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 the process to to get the information about the syscall and et cetera. It's just, uh, it sets in the ring buffer. This ring buffer, if well-sized, packets will not be lost, but uh, events will not be lost. But if events are lost, you will be notified and then you can retry the experiment in, in increasing the buffer size. I, it, it's the same thing that it's, uh, it does. It's uh, with, it collects at syscall enter and exit using uh, uh, trace points that are uh, triggered at, that point, at those points. But th there is a problem that is only for integer args. It just gets the, the, the if, if it's a pointer for a, a file name, it just gets the, the pointer. So you, ha you need something else to, to, to get that. So that's something that I've, I've been working lately. 
it's uh, augmented syscalls using eBPF. So Perf has, has integration with eBPF. It, uh, it was contributed by a guy from Huawei, the companies that make telephones in China, that has in troubles with the United States lately. <laughs> and, uh, but, but, they, but they provide this was really nice. It, you can uh, compile a uh, link with uh, the lib -L LVM and have one big thing with the same problems that are with PCC and stuff. Or you can have it as a, an external tool chain. It will be activated. The, the, the C file, you, you, you use dash E in, in any of the perf uh, tools. And then you see dash E hello.c. And then it identifies, oh, this is not a CPU web, and this is a C program. So I will use Clunk, build it into a .o file, an object file, which is zbpf. And then I will load it to the kernel, set up maps, and out the, the, the things that you need that is done by BPF trace or done by the, the other thing. Uh, th that's a way for you. Uh, th that's interesting. It's the power of uh, BPF. You extend the kernel without writing kernel code. You extend it and just connect it to events. And, and this is one of the examples. If you go to now, if you, you can use perf trace dash e open asterisk to get the open net or open, or there is one more open net by handle, something. And then I use another feature of uh, Perfrace, which is max event. And so I only want the, the next 10 events. I was, in this case, I was building Perf you know, on a set of containers. Uh, and Clunk 6.0 was the one that was running at that time in some container. I don't know exactly what was the distribution, but it was running, so you see <laughs> part. And, uh, and, 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 and you see that the, the output is looking more like uh, uh, S-trace than before. That's because uh, you can configure it that way. You say, oh, that's the event. Uh, tools, per, for example, BPF, augmented, raw, syscall, dot o, which is pre-compiled. So you can use it without the clung, without the tool chain. And even if the kernel change, because the ABI that we are using is the syscall, which it doesn't change. You, you can run it uh, in, in different kind of versions, the same uh, uh, object file generated by client. And then there are several things to make uh, the, uh, the output from perf uh, trace was different, a, li a little bit different. There was the duration of calls and things like that. It was not showing arguments that were ze zero to make it more compact. But the idea is that, uh, and so he, that there's another thing. The idea is that the output of perf trace can be compared to the output of a trace, making it a, a regression trust for both. You can compare, the only thing was the pointers that needs to be, uh, they change for mmap and et cetera, and you have to make some diff tool that takes that into account and eliminates that thing and allows us to uh, do this. And, and so this is uh, only ten, uh, the next 10 times that the close uh, syscall fails in the whole system. And it's closing when uh, shell is trying to close uh, files that are not exist, that are not open. So uh, uh, that, that's the part of my presentation. Now, uh, as you can go and, and, and tell about one experience with even another tool that's present, that uh, is Perf C2C. Oh, sorry, some question. Just, just one thing. What, what went wrong with the tools with this pipe? Is it the wrong pipe? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I have to, sh to check it. It's, it, it, it's a different. Yeah, it's strange. I, I didn't investigate it. I didn't <laughs> investigate. It. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if it was closed twice. Like a race condition. Yeah, right? perhaps, so but because when the, the it, broke, it was a pipe, and at, on exiting it was no longer a pipe. Yeah, because the perf has this thing. When when you do a a, a when it, when it tries to augment the, the number, it looks in, in, in uh, procfs. So maybe there is that that's a race. You okay. So he, he is going to talk about perf C to C, which is another tool which me measures cache line contentions when the hardware uh, has this feature in the PEBS. And, and uh, he will describe something really interesting. It was a possible optimization for PostgreSQL that we discovered while we were preparing the, the presentation. <laughs> yeah. Happy coincidence, actually. So, oh, you okay? Sorry. Okay, so I have uh, the Two examples, as Arnaldo said, uh, uh, the first one is potential disaster because Joe Mario should be here instead of me, and oh, disaster. <laughs> <laughs> no, and he's not. Yeah, this is the disaster. 
What happened? <laughs> yeah, right. You talk about disaster. Shouldn't have said that, yeah. Okay, no disaster. So Joe should have been uh, here talking, <laughs> uh, talking about the C2C data that we have. And afterwards, there's another example we have uh, how you can actually very easily to build perf uh, from the sources, uh, like not even from the uh, kernel git tree that where perf is, but we actually now produce some tarballs. I'll show you. After all. So let's start uh, with the C2C example. Uh, basically, Joe was uh, profiling uh, Postgres uh, benchmark. Uh, this is the name of the benchmark. He would probably explain you more on that. Uh, but basically, it's make the server very busy. And some details about the, uh, uh, about the architecture. It was on the server with uh, two NUMA nodes. It was using the NVMe storage that I was told is really fast. <laughs> uh, that's also one of the reasons uh, he managed to actually find some issue because the performance wasn't eaten by the storage uh, code. So now when the storage was actually really fast, the memory issue showed up. Uh, and for more details on the hardware actually, there's a nice uh, feature in the report. We store almost all of the information about the server in the data file. So if you run perf report, dash dash header only, dash capital I, you will get all the information uh, about the uh, server that he was running uh, the data on. Uh, this is just uh, some basic uh, information about how, what he actually measured at the end. If there's somebody familiar with the output from that benchmark, this is what Joe was looking for. Uh, when we reach this, uh, when he reached the speed up, uh, speed up, so basically after we made the change, so Joe found the issue, uh, compiled the page, applied the page, make new binary, and this is uh, two results before and after. And after with the page, we actually managed to get uh, almost four percent uh, speed up on Postgres uh, v11. There was there were better results on older Postgres. Uh, we will not go through the record phase because you need to run the benchmark and you need uh, to have the server. We don't have it, but we have all the data that Joe actually captured. So this is the record data, uh, record command that Joe was uh, using, C2C record, give me all user, that means I will capture only user space data do it system-wide and do it for uh, five seconds. So what he got when the benchmark was running, he got five seconds of profile data from all the user space application. Afterwards, it's also not so much known feature. You can run perf archive, which will collect all the data, all the binaries and uh, that the data reference. So uh, you will actually get a tarball over here, perf data tar bz2 and uh, you can unpack it on your server and use C2C report as if you were on the machine that the data were recorded. So, and that's basically what Joe provided to us and what we'll, what we'll go through. And, and this can be even a uh, cross-architecture. You can collect from ARM64, let's say, do the analysis on x 64 or any other kind of combination. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I've made the data available. I thought you might be, actually I thought everybody will be like running those comments with me, never mind. This is where you can actually, uh, that we placed uh, the data. <coughs> if you go uh, to that web page, uh, I put all the steps that I will go through uh, to this file so you can just easily copy and paste that uh, to the terminal. 
And C2C tar GZ is all the data that I will be now uh, working on. And the binaries that I will use after is just the Postgres uh, binaries um, before and after the patch was applied. So basically now I will go through the C2C report and show you what I think was the way Joe was looking through the data and identified the data in the source code and came up with the patch, applied, and made up, made up the speed up, made the speed up. Okay. Uh, maybe just quick introduction. I'm not sure everybody's uh, familiar uh, with the C2C. Basically, uh, what it allows you to do in a nutshell, it allows you to identify uh, the shared data structure in the system, which are within one cache line and are accessed from many places of the system. It will basically, if there's data structure like this and it's being really heavily accessed through the, uh, all the CPUs, it will show up in the C2C report. And that's basically what we are after. The queries, is uh, if you identify uh, accesses like this, the queries is uh, to separate them in the structure and make them aligned to the cache line so you can actually ease up uh, the contention on those data. So this is what C2C is in a nutshell. It's much more complicated. We will see it in output right away. So if you actually go away, uh, uh, if you actually go ahead and uh, download, uh, download that uh, tar that I was talking about, we have two sets of data, uh, the original and uh, modified ones. Uh, let me go. Let me go here. So, if you, so if you unpack it, uh, go there. So let's go first through the uh, original original data. So this is the profile that Joe uh, made on the system without any patch applied. This is the original uh, V11 Postgres server running. <coughs> you can. Oh, let me check the steps. You can run, yeah. So what I right now did, I uh, I cannot see that. Okay, I run uh, this uh, tar command. This will basically take the data from the perf archive. This is the tarball that the perf archive uh, spit. And <coughs> it will unpack it to the .debug, uh, .debug fi uh, file. And now you are actually able to run the perf C2C report over the data. OK. 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 Yeah. Uh, so this is the basic display of uh, C2C, uh, C2C report. Every line is now uh, the cache line. <coughs> and let me just go uh, through the field. Uh, the most important is this field, uh, hit ems, and it actually shows uh, the situation when you have the data structure and it's been accessed uh, from, uh, from multiple CPU. And one CPU is trying to store uh, to the structure, and the other one wants it also. And it, uh, and it ended up in the hitman access, which means I want to access this data, but it's in the cache line of another CPU, and it's modified. So I have to wait really long to actually get the data. So the data, the cache lines are sorted based uh, on the hitman uh, by default. So if I show the details about the, if you press D in this, you will actually list the details uh, about the cache line. This is basically what we were able to capture. This is the view uh, of the one cache line. And in those columns, those two columns means the hidden accesses, uh, the reading, that the CPU actually want to read something that was modified in another CPU cache line. And those accesses are like uh, the CPU, some other CPU were uh, storing to those accesses. And this is uh, basically 
uh, how the cache line was accessed uh, through the, through the uh, system. Very important field here is the CPU count over here. And you can see the number of CPUs that were actually fighting over, over, that, uh, over the data. So it was the server with the 64 CPUs. So you can actually identify uh, really uh, uh, hot, hot parts uh, uh, by just uh, looking on the CPU count. Another, another uh, really important uh, information is the source. So this will actually shows you uh, where this access was initiated from. So you can go to the source code, find this file, the line number, and you will see who actually uh, caused this. As you can see, this is the offset on the cache line, and all the accesses are on the number four of the offset. So there's not much we can do about this cache line. If it was different offsets, we can actually see, oh, there's uh, access in one offset, another offset, let's put them apart and see what happens. But that's not the case of this cache line. Where we were actually making the difference is the second cache line, which is not so hot, but still, uh, you can see there are hidden accesses from all over the place. Uh, but the offset is now really different. It goes from uh, 10 hex to 28 hex. And again, you can see the CPU count is quite high, so it's really, it's really uh, stressed code. If you, go, uh, if you go to the source line, uh, you will actually get to the places where the code is accessed, and you need to figure out what each line is actually executing on each, uh, on each offset. So for each offset, you have the piece uh, information where in the source code this access happened and you need to go to the sources and find out which structure on this cache line are actually looking at. That's what Joe did. You actually need to go through the Postgres sources and find out what, what is this access, uh, what is the structure that's behind this uh, cache line. Joe did it for us and actually ad identified uh, that it struck a uh, buffer desk and those three, uh, uh, those three uh, highlighted uh, variables are actually uh, the offsets that you can see in the data file. So the first one, the buff ID and the state, it's some sort of uh, lock in the Postgres. And this structure, LW lock, is like some common structure in Postgres that's doing the locking. And this state field is the main guy of the lock, is the, is the field that all the CPUs are fighting about. And that's actually what you can see here. Uh, the 0x14 uh, and 18 are those, the first guys. Uh, 0x28 uh, offset is the last one. Uh, so the idea. Uh, to actually fix it uh, was to separate this lock away from the other fields. Joe actually made a patch that did uh, following following change. He aligned uh, the lock to the next cache line, and he also had to align uh, this structure, so it all will be uh, allocated on the cache line boundary, and uh, having this attribute aligned and this one make sure that this content log will be in its own, own cache line. Uh, here on the code, and if I go to the modified data, oh, actually, this is the, it's not visible again, right? Never mind. <laughs> it's there, it's on the web, you can, you can go there. So if I go to the modified data, I, and pack it like in the previous case. I'm just unpacking the archive and run the report. So he put the new binary in the place, run the same benchmark, uh, do the, uh, did the monitoring for the C2C record, and we ended up with this profile. So you can see there's still the first cache line. This very 
heavy cache line that we actually didn't touch. But the second, second one, actually, we got rid of the last access there. It was the offset uh, 28, hex 28, and just moving it away from that cache line, we actually eased up the load on that cache line and it showed up in the overall uh, performance and we got the speed up of 4%, which is, which is actually nice. No, I'm, I'm asking if now is for questions. Ah. <laughs> okay, so uh, I will not go through the rest. It's on the internet. You can build the perf from the sources. All the steps are there. Just need to download and execute. It's really nice. If there are any questions, yeah. now is the time. It's over here. It's over here. Not the local one, but the the first address. It's, it's all there. Okay. Now you mentioned that uh, there is a fast facility in the kernel to prove instead of using the base or something. Yeah, yeah. What about the user space? Is there something equivalent? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they they, they have the needs. Uh, repeat the question. What? Oh, the question was, uh, he, he asked if, uh, uh, I said that in the kernel, for function entry and exit, you have a faster uh, way to put a probe than putting a, a breakpoint, which is uh, the kernel nowadays is built to have a prologue, an epilogue uh, with knobs, where when you enable uh, function graph tracing, you go there and substitute the thing and uh, without breakpoints and it works. So for uh, putting uh, a, a probe in a function start, you have that. So, so we, you use that instead of putting a, a breakpoint there. He asked if in the user space there was something similar. I don't really know. I mean, I think that uh, you probes, it, it's there. Uh, and uh, there is other things that even SysNTAP uses, which is Dean Inst, that, that does some, some magic there. But uh, I have not been following that much this, this uh, optimization of uh, probes in user space lately. Have any uh, other questions? If nobody wants, yeah. I will ask some questions. Yeah. And so uh, the question about EBDF, yeah. uh, there is a limit on the size of the program. Yes, and yes. What should we do if we want to, to put some bigger stuff that doesn't fit into the no, the, the thing is, uh, if you have tail calls, for instance, you can start on one and then go to the other one. But the idea of EBPF is to be small. I mean, uh, the, uh, yeah. in the next presentation, uh, and in my presentation about BTF, the, the type form, uh, the, the type form, and the observability uh, improvements that are being made for uh, BPF, so that you can see what's happening in those cases, uh, you're gonna see the output from. Um, uh, BPF tool showing the sizes of a typical uh, uh, BPF program. So if it's that big, I mean, it, it doesn't really fit well with the BPF idea. It's, it's to be something fast that doesn't get into the, in the way that much. I just think of converting a stress into a pure typical thing, and it has a lot of code. Yeah. And you can just fetch everything in the kernel and pass, it's not no. that easy? Yeah, the, th the thing would be, for, for let's say, it's, I think we should discuss this offline, but uh, yeah. the thing is, it's interesting for, for filtering things at the origin. The, 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 initial, the, well, the initial idea of BPF, before eBPF in the 90s for packet processing, was to, to do that, to, to, to at the origin, filter things to get just what you want. If you want everything, then you, you don't need the, 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 the BPF to filter it at the origin. You would just get everything and process it in user space. And then uh, uh, the, the facilities that we have now are, would be already sufficient if not for getting the pointer contents. But the, the, the good thing with BPF for such a thing, for such a uh, uh, use case for S-Trace, let's say, would be to, to filter things at, at the origin. Because when you, when you uh, uh, it, it depends as well. If if you are doing something which is not Cisco intensive, then it's, it would not be a problem even to use P trace. Let's say. 
Any other questions? So, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.